Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. And today, because we've not done it for a while, we're going to talk about gear. But not just any gear, we're looking at five things that have brought me a massive amount of value over the last 12 months. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Until about two years ago, I'd got to the point where I was basically getting daily deliveries from Amazon and I realized I was just stuck in this cycle of buying absolute tat and shitty stuff that I did not need. Stopping that has been a freeing experience and now anytime I do make a purchase, it has to be something that is going to last me for years and provide a massive amount of utility value. So I put this list together to share with you some of the things I've been using over the last few years. And to be honest, some, if not all of them, have been absolute game changers. If you're new to this channel, you should know that I talk about printing a lot. And it's something I recommend to every photographer. Seeing your work transfer from the digital world into something tangible with intrinsic value is very special and provides a deep sense of fulfillment. We're going to look at three different printers in a minute, but the question I get asked the most about printing is how much the operational costs are, and some people seem to be very put off by this. Often these people are thinking about it in the wrong way though. Not only are you completing the photographic process, but we're also creating physical artwork, and there is always a cost to that. A painter has to buy brushes, paper and paint. We have to buy paper and ink. I've found that having that restriction of cost and using resources has made me think much more carefully about the photography I want to create. And more than anything else, over the last 10 years, I saw the biggest improvement in my photography when I started printing. So I started with this. It is the Canon Pro 10S and it prints A3 Plus prints, which is a really lovely size, a bit bigger than A3. And it uses 10 inks, including a chroma optimizer, which makes the colors pop and gives extra longevity to your prints. The prints are high quality and I've always had full confidence selling prints produced by this thing. I was also astonished in preparing for this video to see you can now pick one up secondhand for a little over a hundred pounds and that's absolutely amazing value. I also have here the Canon Pro 300 that Canon sent me. This is basically the upgraded version of the 10S. It makes the same size prints but the printer itself is smaller and it also uses the upgraded Lucia Pro inks from Canon's top of the range printers. It is a stunning printer and probably the one I'd go for if I was just starting out again today. And that is also featured in more detail in another video. Thirdly, I have the Canon Pro 1000, which I bought nearly three years ago now. This is my absolute workhorse and produces amazing A2 prints for all my work on the wall here and for all the prints I now sell. The recent upgrade to the firmware means I can also now make panoramas, which was the subject of last week's video, and they are seriously impressive. Anyway, I've done loads of videos about printing, but I do think it's a game changer and I can't recommend it enough. Next up, we have something not strictly photography related, but it is a thing that has revolutionized my off the grid shoots and camping. Here we have the Jackery Solar Generator 500. It's basically just a big battery, but with a few very important differences. The main one of which is the AC power outlet. I've been using batteries and charging my cameras off the grid for years from the nine volt power on the car and battery banks. But having an AC power outlet is a game changer. It means now when I'm camping or sleeping in the car, I can power my laptop, lamps, and other devices that require AC, like a small fridge or a powered cool box. The second important factor is this also has a solar panel that generates 100 watts of power and will charge the battery back up again. This has honestly transformed my camping experience, especially with the family, because we always went for a plot with a power hookup, but now I can just go totally off grid. In the summer, we went 
went uh, we went camping and this powered everything we needed for the whole weekend it powered the cool box all the lights charged ipads and phones the pump to blow up the sleeping mats uh, my laptop and all my camera gear uh, and it just means that we can now camp anywhere without having to sacrifice those electrical comforts. Now the battery can output 500 watts, which is more than enough to power all your devices. But if you wanted to power things that make heat, like a kettle, coffee machine, or hairdryer, then you'll need the bigger 1000 watt version. The battery in this one is 518 watt hours, which means if you were drawing the full 500 watts, the jack already would last for an hour before it needed recharging. You can see here though that my laptop is plugged in and it's drawing around 60 watts. So it could run this for around eight hours, no problem. But obviously with the solar panel plugged in, it would go for much longer. In my tests, I found in full sun, the solar panel provides around 80 watts of power. So it could power this laptop and then give 20 watts back to the battery to charge it up. To be honest, I am still getting to grips with this thing, but I absolutely love it. It's not cheap. Uh, but I do love the freedom it's provided me and I'll hope hopefully be using it in some upcoming videos for some nice off-grid winter shoots. The other downside though is it's not waterproof and either is the solar panel. If it's raining, the panel's not gonna be generating much energy anyway, but it would be nice to be able to leave it out in changeable weather. However, one thing I wasn't expecting from the Jackery was it to bring me some serious peace of mind at home with, with the real threat of power cuts this winter, having this thing means I can keep the lights on, keep my chest freezer running, charge my devices, keep my internet router on, and even power my piano. It honestly could become essential. Anyway, that's the Jackery 500, a brilliant thing. I've always been a fan of Pulp Fiction and I love the scene where he opens the case, but we never find out what's inside it. We happy? <laughs> We're happy. Well, in this case, we have these little Aperture MC lights. I bought these because they are super portable and I wanted them to help light my outdoor videos when I was shooting at night because I wanted some context to the shot rather than just kind of my face and then a really dark background. However, they have also been extremely useful for my photography too, because they do a full range of RGB colors. So they're brilliant for adding little colored accents to your subject or some color to the background. And because they are so small, they can be rigged up pretty much anywhere or easily held in your hand. This also makes them very good for making some cool light painting type images as well. I also bought these Lim Cube lights, which only produce a white light, but they are super rugged and waterproof, which makes them very versatile. I've been using them to attach to my drone to light subjects from above. And I've made a couple of videos about that now, which was a lot of fun and I really loved the results it created. Both of these lights are built very sturdily. They're not the cheapest lights around, but I know they're gonna last me for years. I also just love the creative options that small lights like this provide for both photography and video. Now, if you are a photographer and you want the best possible website, then look no further than Squarespace, who are the sponsor of this video. It's just so easy to get set up. And unlike social media, you control how your images are presented. You start by using one of their beautiful templates, put some of your images and a bit of your text on there. And before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any coding knowledge either, and it will dynamically adjust to look perfect on all types of screen, including a phone. You can start with a simple gallery, but as you grow, you can then upgrade your site to an online store where you can easily start selling things like prints, books, or anything else that takes your fancy. It also now has a member section if you want to run a subscription service and in the unlikely event that you run into trouble they have award-winning customer service i have used squarespace for many many years now and i've never looked back because they are that good 
So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And if you like what you have created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Last week, I was halfway through planning this video when Andrew Atkinson's daily Twitter poll popped up and asked, has there been one item of equipment, excluding cameras, that has changed, improved, or made a difference to your photography? My answer for this jumped into my head immediately, and that was firstly that I think a good tripod makes a big difference. But the game changer for me was finding the right bag that was fully waterproof and comfortable to carry heavy gear. A few years ago, I bought the F-Stop Suka bag, which really fit the bill at the time, but I have since moved onto the Shimoda Design Action X. This is, without doubt, the best bag I have ever used and has nice, big, comfortable straps that sort of spread the weight onto your chest and your hips, rather than putting pressure on your back and neck, which does make it comfortable for long hikes. I think this is the, the 50 liter version, so it's more than enough to carry a large amount of camera gear and a full wild camping setup. With the adjustable internal camera unit, it's very convenient and will be suitable for all different kinds of camera setups. As a landscape photographer though, the main benefit for me is that it's waterproof. If you saw my video last week, you will have really seen just how effective this thing is. It was absolutely torrential last week. And although my coat, boots and camera all succumbed to the rain, the Shimoda never skipped a beat. And it's hugely reassuring to know I don't need to worry about the stuff in my bag getting wet anymore. Now, strictly speaking, this next one is probably not classed as gear, but they are purchases that last a very long time and bring huge utility value. And that value is anything from entertainment to joy to comfort to sheer delight. And of course, I'm talking about buying artwork. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years thinking about the future of photography and how in many ways it's been devalued for many of us though, it still holds huge value. And if we are not buying each other's work, why should we ever expect anyone else to buy our own? Discovering a piece of work that resonates is a magical experience. And it happened to me very recently. I was sat at home browsing Twitter and for the second time on this video, Andrew Atkinson's popped up. But this time he had shared a beautiful black and white pinhole image of an old woolen mill in Yorkshire. Now this place is very significant to me because when my dad was seven, my Italian grandma and my dad's older sisters used to work there and they would travel there miles from Pontefract on the bus. And because my granddad was terminally ill in hospital, they had to leave my dad to fend for himself. It was very different times, I suppose, but Andrew's image seemed to perfectly capture the mood for me. And actually, really sort of stir up the emotions. And that's what great work, artwork is about. Making something meaningful, stirring up emotions, telling great stories, exploring or challenging ideas and bringing joy to the world. I really don't think it's any more complicated than that. And lending your support to this community, to fellow photographers is hugely important and will keep photography flourishing. And for me, I can't wait to put this up on my wall. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to buy my artwork and support the channel, uh, there are links below to my book and some prints and things, uh, or just give the video a like and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Bye.